And on this side. Right there, right there. Ready? Okay, one, two, and three. <gasps> ah! <laughs> We're walking, we're walking down to the post office. Crazy. I am not as sore as I thought I was gonna be. Usually this would be the worst day, three days after a big peak. I, I, the downhill, 13 miles downhill at Pikes Peak. I was, I thought my quads were gonna be completely trashed. You know, very, very sore, hard to walk around. What's the most sore, you know, believe it or not, are my calf muscles. So I gotta pay attention to those today. But anyway, we're gonna go, remember what I said yesterday, just go walk around your house, no running, no gym, uh, but just keep the legs moving a little bit to, uh, what is the, uh, how's the saying go, motion? Uh, yeah, motion is lotion for those joints and uh, all, everything going on in the legs. So anyway, that's what we're doing, walking to the post office. Let's go, come on. <laughs> go there we go okay decided to keep this to myself but first where's the knife my blunt knife here do 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 i never know what's inside these boxes okay let's see here hey some books whoa shout out to randall thank you randall that is awesome randall i can't read it now uh he basically is saying it's a book uh, similar to like the Lord of the Rings. That's awesome. Thank you, Randall. It's the way of kings. That is awesome. I love reading. Sadly, I'm unable to read a lot right now just because of life and busyness, but thank you, Randall, for sending the book. That's awesome, man. I really appreciate it. So I'll, I'll read your note with true love once I go inside. Awesome. Oh, so cool. Okay. Oh my, my nice. Okay. Yes. One second. Let me get this card open. And he says, thank you for agreeing to be on our podcast. Our mission is to make race day more fun and the running community more accessible. So thank you for giving a couple of entrepreneurs and a fellow CU buff, go buffs, some of your time. That is awesome. So Kevin, I'm going to be on his podcast. I'm recording it tomorrow. Remember, when we train, we train. When we podcast, we podcast. I, I, so far this week during my rest week, I've done three podcast interviews. I'm doing Kevin's tomorrow. I think I have four lined up tomorrow. I kind of got to, I was, was going to do one or two a day, but anyway, we're fitting them in. Thank you, Kevin. Race mob. Oh, this is so sweet. Do you know in college, my hair was down to my shoulders? Yep. You can find pictures on the internet. And uh, I used to wear headbands just like this uh, to hold my hair back all day long. But even when I ran, that is what I'm talking about. Thank you, Kevin. Can't wait to uh, be on the podcast tomorrow. Here we go. I do know what is in this package. Come on now. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Which one to show you first? Let's go. Oh, I don't even know. Let's go yellow. Let's go yellow. Butter my bread. There it is. Seek beauty on the background. Seek on the back of the, sh of the shirt. Seek beauty. Work hard and love each other. We got butter my bread. So this is the order for the family. Here it is. Oh, I got I, I forgot about this color as well. Oh, that is awesome and gray. Uh, so I've got some shirts for the boys as well. Oh yeah, this is just a straight up sweatshirt. So butter my bread and here's the deal. Um, last time we did a printing from Teespring was right when the uh, coronavirus was hitting. So they actually had to cut a lot of people, like fire them. So they were really slow in processing some orders. I apologize about that. This arrived very quickly. I think it arrived, I ordered it last week, so it arrived within like seven days for sure. So anyway, if you did have to wait last time, it was the, oh, this is so soft, so soft. Oh, so good. Another gray one. Oh yeah, so it's popping. Colors are looking good. Let me just double, let me see what's in this last one here. Oh yeah, for true love, when she goes shopping at the grocery store, a tote bag. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Oh, that's, so when Bridget goes shopping at Trader Joe's like we did yesterday, she likes to have a good tote bag. Ooh, this one, I think this one looks a little bigger than the last time. So awesome, so cool. There we go, we'll show that to her in a second here. All right, I think I gotta toss one of these on here real quick. Hold on here. 
And we're back. There it is, everybody. I don't know about you, but I'm just liking yellow these days. Ever since the Kendall Mountain Run, when they handed out uh, yellow race shirts to all the racers, I just uh, something about yellow is is getting me going. And plus, these crazy times of COVID bring a little light into the world, if you know what I mean. And yes. Shout out to Andy Dunn. He already emailed me. He guessed my, uh, almost guessed my winning time at the Pikes Peak Marathon. He missed it by two seconds, but he was the closest. So Andy and I are communicating. Andy, you're going to get uh, whatever Butter My Bread merch you want. Uh, it's all listed down below. Okay, here's the deal. My English teacher from high school, she'd be proud of me. I did a little foreshadowing in yesterday's vlog. Here it is on your screen, rubbing some cream. I forget what it even was. It wasn't icy hot, but some cream on my knee. All right, and that connects to the title of the vlog and how I decided to keep this to myself over the past couple of weeks. All right, so I really appreciate everyone's concerns on Strava about my training. Like, you guys are amazing. You follow my training very closely. You give your thoughts, your opinions. Um, I can't always uh, reply to all your thoughts and opinions. There's too many, but I do read them just so you know. And yes, there are people that are concerned about what I do in my training. And I, I love that. Like, you actually care about what I'm doing, whether I'm training too easy, training too hard, not going to the track enough, doing too many long runs, whatever the case may be, I really do appreciate you chiming in. And again, I've said before, you can't let outside noise impact what you believe for your training too, too much. Now, if you're a brand new runner, uh, you've never, uh, you're, you're new to the sport, I think it's good to get a lot of input from different areas, unless you have a coach, of course. But uh, for me, of course, I do believe in my training. And what did I say in the vlog? It was from last, I think it was a vlog about 10 days ago. It was called Overcoming Fear, Work, Science, engine zone. Upper right hand corner where I talk about my training and I talk about what I believe in for yes, getting ready for a race like the Pikes Peak Marathon. Basically what I said in that vlog was training between 10,000 feet and 12,000 feet, not good enough. You gotta train between 13,000 and 14,000 feet uh, and here it is on your screen in meters in order to prepare as well as possible for a race like the Pikes Peak Marathon, all right? And I, I am reading stories out there of people getting very lightheaded and maybe it was because of the smoke, uh, but I suspect it's more so because they were unable, you know, whether they're from out of state or whatever the case may be, they were unable to get up into that altitude and I get it, like I can't even imagine and that's why I give more props to people who come from out of state at, you know, let's say even close to sea level or near sea level and race the Pikes Peak Marathon. Beyond impressed. Like, I don't even know if I would attempt to do that. You are braver than I am uh, in that regards with respect. I, I can't imagine doing that. But for me and my training, I fully, fully am all in on this notion that the more often I can get above 13,000 feet specifically in a training block, and yes, uh, even on Tuesday before uh, the marathon, the Pikes Peak Marathon, I went up Beerstadt. All right, here's some footage going up Beerstadt, and uh, there were some definitely some people concerned on Strava, like, Seth, what are you doing? At that point, I was six days out from the marathon, and I said, listen, I, I know what I'm doing, I believe in my training, and this is how I train, this is how I get ready to run as fast as possible at high altitude. It is a calculated risk. So here's the story, here's what happened. 10 days before the Pikes Peak Marathon, and this is what I did last year when I took second in the Pikes Peak Ascent. 10 days before, I wanted to get one last hard effort. Beer stat was an easy effort, but I still wanted to get above 13,000 feet, okay? There's a difference there. But 10 days out, I went up to Quandary Peak, okay? Here's some footage. There's Quandary Peak from the drone, and I wanted to go hard, and I wanted to go fast. One last hard effort, because I knew my body would recover, because why? Experience. And I, I just know how my body recovers from efforts like that, uh, given the distance, given the vertical gain, and so I went hard and I went fast and it was a good effort and I was breathing hard on the uphill. My legs were not exactly fresh on the uphill, but it's a calculated risk. And so this is what happened on the way down. Uh, and this is what I've been withholding from all of you for the last really two weeks. And I'm gonna, I don't regret not telling you, but it's been very, very hard. Because again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I always wanna be transparent. I wanna be open. I wanna communicate with you the highs 
you know, I'll just say winning the Pikes Peak Marathon and the lows. All right, this is life. Life is not just about the highs. It's also about the lows and sharing in those lows. So on the way off of Quandary Peak, I fell and that's a risk. I fell twice and one of them was not good. It, it was not good. So the first one, I fell about a, uh, about a half mile from the top. Uh, I was not filming um, and I hit my right knee on a rock, okay? The inside of my right knee. And again, this is 10 days out from the Pikes Peak Marathon. Uh, some people were around me, and, but it, uh, I got up and I kept going. And it, it, I, the, the fall on Kendall Mountain, frankly, was quite a bit worse. Then, about two miles later, near the bottom of Quandary, I fell again. And I was filming, okay? And I caught it on film. And I think what I remember right before I fell was honestly looking at the person to my left. And that was a mistake. Um, uh, frankly, I like keeping a little bit of distance between us. I, I, that was go I remember that going through my mind. So I'm coming down and it's a flat section and there's a little uphill. And you can see on your screen right now, steps. And I tripped on a step, okay? And I nailed my left kneecap on the last board, okay? So here we go, here's the clip, let it roll. Mama Mia, Mama Mia, oh my my. It was not good. It was very painful. And I honestly, I don't think the camera caused me to fall, just so you know. I, again, I remember looking to my left and just, I clipped my foot on one of those steps and nailed my left knee. It was really bad. It was more painful than Kendall Mountain. Even though Kendall Mountain had much more blood, uh, it was, Kendall Mountain was more a flesh wound, whereas this guy was definitely, definitely like a, a bruise, like a deep, deep bruise. So here it is, everybody. I had to make a conscious decision, and this connects to the question of the day. Bear with me here. I had to make a conscious decision not to tell you and not to put that clip into the vlog from that day. It was tearing at me so, so much. Again, because I always want to be transparent and open. But why did I not do that? First of all, well, it was really one, only one reason, but the knee got worse and worse. Three days later, and we're going to talk to True Love here in a second outside the studio. Um, basically, I almost threw in the towel. I, I, like, for real, on the Pice Peak Marathon. I, it was that bad. But the reason I did not tell you is the mental side of racing. And I told True Love, um, I told True Love, I trust, I have faith, I'm gonna get through this, and I'm gonna arrive on that starting line in Manitou Let's Springs. Let's go, Seth! Let's go, I'm Seth! rock and roll, okay? But I'm telling you, it was very, and so why did I not tell you? I did not want a, an excuse in my brain if I, ended up starting the Pikes Peak Marathon and I got halfway up the mountain and my knee started to hurt, I did not want the mental excuse to go through my brain, oh, I already told everybody, my knees hurt, everybody knows, every YouTube knows, the YouTube family knows, you know, everyone, I didn't want that going, I want, if I'm gonna start a race, I'm gonna start a race, I'm gonna do everything I can to finish that race. So that was why I didn't tell you, and it was so hard. That's what I've been with, I, I withheld it from you until now, and um, it's been weighing on me. And so I wanted to get it out there in the open. And question of the day, um, have you ever had to play some mental games with yourself in order to pull off a race? or win an age category, you know, win, a, win a, an age category in a race, or set a PR. Something went on, whatever the case may be, mental, physical, uh, but have you ever had to play some mental games with yourself? The last 10 days before Pikes Peak Marathon, I had to play some mental games, and it was, um, it wasn't, uh, it was not fun. It was not fun. And so we're gonna go out, and I just want 
true love to communicate with you how serious it really was. And um, anyway, we're open here, we're transparent, we support each other, and um, I never want to withhold things from you, but sometimes I felt it necessary for me to perform at the highest level. Isn't that crazy? At the highest level, I didn't want any excuses as to why I might throw the towel in halfway up Pikes Peak, or frankly, halfway down Pikes Peak. Mm, wow. <laughs> I, I, I'm just processing it with all of you right now. All right, let's go outside, check in with True Love. You all know how much I love to grill. I lit, I had to take a break. I haven't grilled in six weeks. That's how focused and frankly tired I was training for Pikes Peak. It's crazy. So anyway, we're back in action now. We are back, ready to go. Here it is. Woo! Oh yeah. Here she comes, on this side, right there, right there. Ready, okay, one, two, and three. Ah, <laughs> tote bag. I love my coat. Butter my bread, oh, isn't that good? Oh, so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it almost looks bluish purple. Yeah. And I love that. So, now you can go shopping. I love this. Go shopping. I use my other one all the time. So, butter it. You can put the butter you. in the bag. There it oh, is. Hi, dinner was amazing. Oh my gosh. Not too shabby. That was the best dinner. So good. This man can grill. So good that we did not even film dinner. I just focus in on the task at hand. Here's Michael. All right, here is the deal, hon. How serious was my knee 10 days ago? Really serious. It was. We were extremely worried. Very worried. I, which we don't get worried. We don't get too but worried. We were extremely worried. I was uh, hobbling around a little bit and rubbing cream on it, stretching, and it was like time was of the essence, so there's not much I could do. Right. We were just prepared for whatever it was going to do. And it said, I'll be a champion. I'll be a champion. How about I'll just be, how about we just win this? How about we just win this? But there, we were, good. there were moments where I was like, I, I don't know. I almost had. Didn't you have to walk one other time yeah, through running? Yeah, there was a run where I, I walked for maybe about a half mile. And so. Which you kept your wits and spirit about you because I would have been devastated. I did. I, I just knew, like, stay, stay patient and things will turn out all right. But again, it was, the timeline was very tight. So anyway, Michael's, uh, Michael needs to go to bed. So we got it. We got to focus on this little Show guy. We are going to get you an update Tuesdays with true love, tomorrow. uh, tomorrow. So <gasps> come back duck. tomorrow. We're a little behind because of everything happening. Yeah. So being champions. Yeah. So being champion. Yeah. You know, even. celebrating, celebrating, celebrating. All right, everyone. We love you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And we are going to toss it back to the Pikes Peak Marathon 2020. Boom, boom, boom. Right here, right here, right about where Michael's at, where precious, precious Michael's at. <laughs> oh, he's tired. All right, seek beauty. Work hard. And love each Thank other. You, See you tomorrow. Monday. <laughs> he said love each other.